Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan. Welcome to Tashkent. It's the largest city of Central Asia with a population of 2.9 million. It's a city of wide avenues and green alleys and architecture from different periods like Soviet architecture, modern architecture, and of course, magnificent minarets and mosques. Now, it also has a great variety of cuisine from every part of the world, but most importantly, Uzbek cuisine. So let's get to know more about Tashkent. Tashkent lies in the northeastern part of the country. Once it was an ancient city on the Great Silk Road from China to Europe. Then it was the fourth largest city of the USSR. Now it is gradually transforming to a modern world-class metropolis. The center of the city is Amir Timur Square. It's a plaza with fountains and esplanades around the statue of Amir Timur, a legendary ruler from the 1300s. This is the first place most tourists go to. Tashkent gets plenty of foreign tourists. And this is? Sam. Um, it's a really interesting city. I mean, it's got a lot of interesting monuments like this one and lots of cool spots around the city that you can take the metro, which has been really fun. We've kind of been on the metro all day, so. What's your most favorite type of food so far? Um, I mean, how can you go wrong with plov? And there's that, I forget what it's called, but the one out by the, the television tower. It's got the supposedly best plov in the city and it was really good. Yeah, I would say Tashkent exceeded what I was expecting. I didn't really know what to think about before coming here. I just kind of booked the trip and here I am. And This is where you find the famous Uzbekistan Hotel. It received its first guests in 1974. It was part of a large-scale restoration of the city after the 1966 earthquake that destroyed half of Tashkent. It's one of the classic examples of Soviet architecture. Some call it brutalist like this style of uh, like raw concrete type of architecture. And we continue our tour. Around the square, there are lots of restaurants and museums, like Amir Timur Museum. You know it's important because you can find it on a local banknote. After Uzbekistan became independent in 1991, they had to revive the nation's spiritual and cultural heritage and recognize the historical figures that played an important role in the world history, like Amir Timur, also known as Tamerlane. He was able to unite the Central Asian lands. He promoted science, education, culture, music, and poetry. The history of Tashkent took a sharp turn after the 1966 earthquake. Half the city was destroyed. This is an actual clock that stopped at the exact time of the earthquake. More than 300,000 people lost their homes, and the huge reconstruction began, which brought people from the USSR republics who volunteered to help. All the new buildings were designed by architects from Moscow, and they were able to withstand the strongest of earthquakes. They labeled this architectural style seismic modernism. The city was restored in three and a half years, and Tushkent became one of the best Soviet cities. I met these guys at the earthquake memorial, known as Monument of Courage. They just came back to Tushkent after 30 years in Israel. Let's see what they have to say. Так. Расскажите свои впечатления о Ташкенте. О Ташкенте, ну мы Ташкент уже много лет знаем, мы здесь родились вообще-то. Мы жили в этом... Папа родился здесь, вот прямо на этом месте, где сейчас во время землетрясения как раз его дом был разрушен в это, в это время. Вот Скажите, вот. можно ли узнать город тех лет и сейчас? Нет, конечно, большая разница. Когда мы уезжали, ну Ташкент был он... Он еще был, как говорится, Здорово. старый. Дома, да, были еще старые, все не облицовано. Не было таких парков, не было таких улиц. Но здесь родился, вырос и всю молодость провел все. Пешком ходил здесь, на машине ездил водителем. Я знал все улицы, все, а сейчас я их не узнаю. Действительно изменился город. И в лучшую сторону. В лучшую сторону. В лучшую сторону. В лучшую да? сторону. Что вы отметили? Зеленый город, очень зеленый. Чистый гостеприимный очень. народ. Ну, узбеки всегда были гостеприимный народ. Это, это, не, от, это не отнять, это не отнять. У нас в Израиле тоже много узбеков, очень много, да. А правда, да, что тогда очень много со всего Советского Союза приезжали и помогали восстанавливать этот А, да, после землетрясения, да. И на каждом доме была вот такая надпись от Белоруссии узбекскому народу, вот, и с Украины узбекскому народу, Челябинская область. Я очень много домов знаю, строек. Здесь такая стройка была страшная. Но мы, но мы после землетрясения сразу же в свой дом не могли зайти. И он, крыша была очень тяжелая, и он обрушился, все, и ничего не осталось. Успели только выскочить, все. Расскажите, вот вы уже 
уже, если не живете в Узбекистане, кухня осталась в вашей любимой? Да, мы все время Что готовим узбекскую кухню. Вот. Плов, манты, самса, шурпа, э, шурпа лагман. лагман. In 1977, Tushkent got a subway system. Today it has four lines and 43 stations. Most stations are like works of art and reflect typical Uzbek motifs like cotton, agriculture and such, but some stations really stand out, like the Cosmic Station or Turkestan Station, one of the most recent ones. Wow, pretty impressive. This is basically a museum and a very affordable one. The entrance is just 15 cents. Good news is that now it's okay to film videos in most places, even in the subway. Besides the subway, they also have a network of buses, and a single ride on a bus is 15 cents also. Despite that, Tashkent is still a car-dependent city, and the number of cars keep increasing every year. Driving style of the locals leaves much to be desired. Trust me, I've driven in over 20 countries, and Uzbek drivers are some of the most reckless ones. One of the worst things about driving in Tashkent is there are plenty of U-turns, just like this one. And it creates a lot of accident-like situations where people are honking and those driving in the left lane always have to go to the right because those people making the U-turn are always in your lane. So I always try to stay in the middle lane. If you think everybody's a professional and they know how to drive in these situations, it's not, it's not like that because there's plenty of accidents. We've seen like a dozen accidents already. Good thing is that taxi rides are dirt cheap. Most of the time, you're not going to pay more than one or two dollars. Tashkent has changed dramatically over the last few years. Many new parks, business centers were constructed, and now there's a real construction boom going on. Tashkent is turning into a real modern metropolis with a good choice of restaurants and the nightlife. Let me show you some of the cool locations. Tashkent City Park. It's a brand new district with modern apartment complexes and a great park that was finished in 2019. It's super modern. There's an artificial pond and a music fountain. There's also a planetarium and a 7D mood theater. There are lots of restaurants, coffee shops, and scenic locations. Wow, Tashkent City Park, you know, impressive. And with the way things are going, there's so much construction going on that I think you won't be able to recognize the city five, ten years from now. Здравствуйте, как вас зовут? Меня зовут Монтоза. Михлиноза. Назовите три вещи, которые вам нравятся по поводу Ташкента. Первое – это плов. Второе – да, кухня. Второе – наша погода. Всегда вовремя и весна на месте, и зима на месте, и осень на месте. Все на месте, все прекрасно. И третье – Мне метро очень нравится, у нас очень красивые метро станции. И Какая очень любимая станция? Космонавты, где я живу. И наша школа. Студсята. Вы будущее свое связываете с Ташкентом или какие-то еще перспективы? У меня международный уровень. Ну, я хочу выйти на международный уровень, да. То есть стажировку, да, куда-то там? Да. Без этого никак. Супер. Ну, спасибо за беседу. Another example of the modern Tashkent is Magic City Park. It's a fairy tale like park with colorful houses. Great place for a family weekend. There's a movie theater, an aquarium, a water show, many restaurants and cafes and shops. A lot of shopping options, and also it's a park, and it's just a beautiful area. You know, kind of reminds you like Disneyland. Oh. You know, fountains, they always make it so refreshing. I love it, I love it. Скажите, вы откуда? Я сам из Казахстана, с города Астаны. Так, а в Ташкенте что делаете? Приехал попутешествовать. Ну, сейчас вот второй день гуляю. Классно очень. Старый город, новый город. Ну, отлично. Впечатление очень. А что именно нравится? Ну, во-первых, ну, я сам с севера, с севера Казахстана. У нас уже там печку топит, холодно, а здесь ходит жара, 30 чем-то градусов, это какой-то диссонанс возникает. А так нравится еда, цены очень классные. Что еще? Люди. Ну, так, ну интересно, в общем. А угу. скажите, казахский язык и узбекский, они похожи? Они очень похожи, но не, не, не до конца. Ну как бы иногда не понимаешь, 
ну да, понимаешь. Угу. Ну, очень много слов похоже. Но вы на русском здесь общаетесь или на казахском? Э, и на русском, и бывает на казахском понимает тоже. Да. Да. Ага. Так, как-то так. Супер. Как вас зовут? Кланыш зовут меня. Очень приятно. Да. Хорошего отдыха. Спасибо вам. Спасибо. Tashkent is modern and traditional at the same time. Business and high-rise districts coexist with traditional Uzbek bazaars and old low-rise communities where everyone knows each other. They call these communities mahalas. Let's take a walk around one of them. It's got a very special vibe to it. You know, there's a river down below. Almost makes you feel like you're in Venice at one point. But if you look over here, you almost feel like you're in an, some Arabian quarter, you know? Like in an old town or some, I don't know, Zanzibar. People are so friendly. This gentleman invited us to his house for some tea. His family has lived in this house for decades. Когда вот это было построено все? 150, 200 лет. They had my my это отец, мать здесь жили. Ой, как красиво вас. У вас водопровод в доме есть? Водопровод есть, канализация есть. А зимой не топите, отопления нету. Отопление вот, 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 газ, газом мы отопляем, вот. Здесь я сплю, у меня старуха умер давно, 22 года тому назад. Больше, больше тонны уже ей дают. Больше тонны? Да. Но только вот эта часть? Да. А как вы успеваете съедать все? А я все не, не будем кушать это, ну, сыновья есть, соседи есть, внуки у меня, дети внуки, mm -hmm. они все здесь не живут. Самые хорошие, до сих пор я живу здоров, mm -hmm. все увижу, все слышу, хорошо. Это очень хорошо. Then we saw some ladies picking up walnuts. This almost feels like countryside, right? Right, but we're actually in the middle of the city. Здесь ночью посторонний не ходит. А вот кто будет ходить посторонний, сразу говорит, кому ты идешь? А в многоэтажном доме разницы нету. Это Ари с 15 века. Раньше смотрели, с него пили. Воды же не было. А вот сейчас вот мусор, трава везде. Are you hungry, guys? Because if you are, Tashkent is a good place to be. If you want to try the most famous national Uzbek dish, plov, go to the center of plov. It's right by the famous TV tower. They have several varieties and you can watch the entire cooking process. It's a whole show and trust me, you're gonna love it. How about a shish kebab? Sure, juicy pieces of lamb or beef on a skewer. You can't go wrong with that. If you love meat, you gotta try shish kebab or just kebab. You know, it's a meat on a skewer. It's been pre-marinated and cooked over fire. Mm, wonderful. I ordered lamb, but you can order beef or chicken, whatever you like. Also, we got some veggies, fresh salads, and lots of onions. It smells fantastic. Let's dig in. And how can you say no to samsa? Of course you can't. Those are delicious meat pies. One of the most favorite snacks in Tashkent and all of Uzbekistan is samsa. This is a very popular pie, meat pie. And it's super, super cheap. Let's see what's inside. Oh, oh the smell, the smell is good. I might have another one. Also, you can add some sauce. Mm. Delicious. Personally, I love Uzbek soups, like shurpa, it's a lamb and vegetable soup, or lagman, it's a noodle soup with meat. They're both thick and very substantial. Price-wise, the further off you go from the tourist places, the cheaper it gets. How much do you think I paid for this lunch? Plov, bread, samsa and some tea. $1.5. Not expensive at all. There's a countless number of parks, and many of them represent different cultures, like the Japanese garden. It's a nice green getaway right in the city center. Now, I've never been to Japan, and this is the closest thing to Japan over here. 
let's enjoy some serenity. And you know, in every Japanese garden, there's gotta be those colorful, colorful fishes. So let's find them. Oh, there they are. Where's my fishing rod? Ironically, it was initially built by Japanese prisoners of war in 1947. There's a small pond and you can rent a paddle boat. At Seoul National Park, you'll find typical Korean buildings, artificial ponds with water lilies and rare plants from South Korea. The creation of the park was financed by Korea to promote the spread of South Korean culture. Part of the reason Uzbekistan has so many Koreans is because in the 1930s, the USSR forcefully relocated over 170,000 Koreans from the far east of Russia to Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. That's why you'll find a lot of Korean restaurants, shops and other buildings all over the city. For example, they construct in this new shopping district called Korean Mun. Pretty nice. This is what it looks like. And this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. There are other great parks in the city like Echo Park. It's a modern park with sports facilities. Very family friendly and it's a popular place for different festivals. To celebrate 30 years of independence, they recently opened New Uzbekistan National Park. This is what it looks like. There are about 70 universities and colleges in Tashkent. Let's talk to some students. We are studying in the of Information Technology in the Alha Razmi on the Faculty of Cyber Security in the Information Security. At this moment, considering that Information Technology and Social Security are growing up, besides that, we are opening a special city for programming something like the Silicon Valley in America. Ну, конечно, до них нам далеко, но первые шаги для этого делаются. У нас, допустим, в, после окончания нашего факультета большую часть в, в третьем и четвертом курсе вербуется либо Министерством внутренних дел, либо Министерством обороны, насколько я помню. Перспективы для себя какие видите? Это будет за границей или это будет Узбекистан больше? Сейчас об этом сложно сказать, но в планах, конечно, хотелось бы посетить другие страны и поработать, перенять их опыт но использовать и развивать свою экономику в дальнейшем. Скажите, а вот вы как себя видите в будущем? А в будущем, если бы хотелось, то я здесь ненадолго, год максимум, ну, или через два года я бы собирался переехать в Германию к брату, именно по сфере тоже IT, то есть кибербезопасности. А сейчас Узбекистан, он имеет потенциал удерживать э, выпускников у себя? Э, так как, э, ну, не знаю, можно ли об этом рассказывать или нет, но коррупция все-таки mm -hmm. как бы, везде и как бы существует. Э, хотелось бы еще раз напомнить о том, что зарплаты, потому что, как мы сейчас видим, у тех, кто есть потенциал, они остаются в Узбекистане, но они работают на других странах удаленно. Mm. Вот в чем дело. Все понятно. Да, mm. вот. Потому что у нас нет востребованности на это, потому что ну, у нас нет каких-либо корпораций. Например, как Google возьмем, да? Если mm. мы откроем свой какой-либо marketplace, как Wildberries или там Amazon, у нас будет возможность. Три причины, почему это классный город Ташкент. Так, менталитет, в первую очередь, а во-вторых, это национальное блюдо. Именно не то, что Ташкин, а в целом Узбекистан. Почему? А, а в-третьих, то, что мы умеем, а, как бы, как на узбекском называется сабар, то есть ждать. Ждать, терпеть. Вот что, почему мы выбираем всегда А что это означает терпеть? Терпеть то, что мы можем терпеть угнетение, да, со стороны правительства. Почему? Вот как а, подняли тему бороды. Узбек... А, сейчас вот здесь вот у нас в самом, как по опыту могу сказать, а, в тату, да, в твит, у нас там нельзя, к примеру, там с бородой. Например, учителя приходит, например, бородами, да, не пускает. А вообще-то государство, президент разрешил, да, вообще-то, не, нету запрещенства, вообще-то даже, конституцию, да. Или, например, хорошее образование у учителей есть, которые платки, да, они ходят, а там внутри не пускает. Есть, которые фиговые учителя, которые короткие, например, да, вот, вообще-то не учат, как будто одевают э, легкое поведение, а их пускают. The best university in Uzbekistan is Westminster International University. All right, now let's take a look at the major sites. Right next to Amir Timur Square is a street that is called Tushken Broadway. It's a popular walking street, a pretty nice place to relax and cool down in the shade of perennial trees. 
There are lots of street artists, food vendors, and ping pong tables. I love ping pong. <laughs> You know what I love about Tushkent is that all these trees in September, almost October, and they're still green and everything's blooming. It's just so beautiful. I like that. Because the city's in the middle of steps, I was expecting everything to be yellow by now, but it seems like it's uh, the middle of the summer. Wonderful. Okay, you got the regular police, and you got police on horses. This building is known as Zarafshan, and it was built in 1974 during the, during the Soviet days. And at the time, it was the largest restaurant in Central Asia. It was so big, three stories high, three stories below. But nowadays, it's more of a mall. It's mall, it has cafes, restaurants, and everything. Let's see what it has to offer today. Let's walk up these stairs. There's a fountain in the middle. I love this area. I can't believe it was just one restaurant occupying all this space. This street takes you from Amir Timur Square to Mastakalik Maidane, or the Independent Square with fountains. During the Soviet times, it was called Lenin Square. This is the Independent Square in Tashkent, and this is called the Arch of Independence. There's also the Independence Memorial, but for now, the access to it is closed. And I love this park, it's huge. There's a lot of flower beds, there's a lot of fountains, there's a lot of trees. There's also a lot of governmental buildings like the Ministry of Finance, the Cabinet of Ministers, and many others. And that's why there's a huge police presence over here. Right next to it is State Museum of the History of Uzbekistan. This museum has three levels, and it covers the country from prehistorical to the modern times. It's a great introduction to the country if you're just starting your tour in Tashkent. The third level is about where Uzbekistan is heading and the future prospects. Right next door is Romanov Palace. This residence was built in 1891 and it belonged to the Prince Nikolai Romanov, who was a grandson of Emperor Nikolai I. He was exiled by his royal parents to Tashkent in 1877. Unfortunately, the place is closed right now. No city tour in Uzbekistan is complete without visiting the main bazaar. So let's go to Chorsu Bazaar. We're now about to visit the largest market in Tashkent. It's called Chorsu Market. I'm so excited. Let's walk in. The city's best known market, located in the center of the old town. Its enormous aquamarine carapace sets the stage for the daily bustle of thousands of shoppers. I feel like I'm hungry for some onions. I wonder if they have any onions. Oh, they got me covered. What's the most delicious? Marco. This is Marco's red, right? Yes, red. They use it for the plow, right? Yes, I've never seen it. Pomegranates, khaki fruit, apricots, grapes, meat and different types of spices are all in abundance here. Of course you can find all the necessary ingredients for a good plov. <laughs> Twice the size of my head. <laughs> right next door to it is the Kukaldash Madrasa. It's a medieval madrasa that was built around 1570 by the Shebani dynasty of rulers. 
The inner yard is just fascinating. And what's cool about it is that it's an actual madrasa today. It's a religious university, and they still have classes here. Wow! Now let's visit Museum of Victims of Political Repression. It's dedicated to the memory of the people who fought for the independence of Uzbekistan. You know, Uzbekistan, like many other countries, suffered from Russian occupation during the Russian Empire era and then the Soviet Union. So altogether, they consider it 150 years of occupation. The repression started in 1860, when the Russian Empire waged a colonial war in Central Asia and intensified during the Soviet times. Too bad everything is only in Uzbek, not even Russian. Looking at pictures is great, but you're not going to understand much. Imagine the horror these people had to go through to be sent from this wonderful motherland all the way to Siberian labor camps. That's terrible. And let's just hope that one day in the world we'll have no oppressive regimes. That would be great. If you love art, you can visit State Museum of Art. The initial collection of the museum consisted of 100 works of art from that same Prince Nikolai Roman of private collections that were nationalized in 1918. Recently, there was a corruption scandal. The chief curator of the museum, Mr. Rusmanov, was found selling artworks in the black market for 15 years. He was caught in 2014, persecuted and sentenced to nine years in jail. Serves him right. Art Gallery of Uzbekistan. It has contemporary art exhibits from the 20th and the 21st centuries. Some abstract pieces on the first floor are wonderful and thought-provoking. However, not enough exhibits to justify the entry fee of $5, which is a lot by local standards. Hey, let's not ignore the elephant in the room. The Tashkent Television Tower. You can see it from everywhere. It's a 375-meter tower. This is the famous Tashkent TV Tower, and it was finished in 19... 78, but it only started its operation in 1985, and at the time it was the fourth tallest tower in the world. Now today it's the 12th. All right, and we're going up, flying to the moon. Okay, we're finally on top, and you know what? The observation deck is closed, but the option they offered us is to go to the, the local restaurant. You know, it's cool, it's a rotating restaurant. Now we're going to be watching the beautiful city of Tashkent while sipping some coffee. It's a pretty romantic spot if you want to make a date special. The Minor Mosque is one of the new sites of Tashkent, opened in 2014. It's a huge modern mosque with tower and minarets and a turquoise dome and can hold up to 2,400 people. While Uzbekistan is predominantly Muslim, other religions are also represented. This cathedral is called Sacred Heart Catholic Cathedral and it was built in 1912. This Russian Orthodox Church is called Holy Assumption Cathedral. It was built in 1871. What I found curious about it was the depiction of the Red Army soldiers who executed the Tsar family back in my hometown of Yekaterinburg. I've never seen the church people portray communists before. How is the economy doing? Typical salaries in the city are pretty low, $300 to $400 a month. Contrary to many countries like Russia, America has a positive image here and many people dream of going to the U.S. Matter of fact, lots of Uzbeks live in the U.S., they work hard and they send money back to their homeland. I remember back in 2003 when I was in Tennessee. I had some Uzbek friends and some of them were working three shifts. I don't know how that's possible. Green card diversity lottery is being advertised everywhere and kindergartens and schools with a focus on English are in high demand. The tourism industry is growing fast. There's a lot of new hotels and restaurants being built. Although corruption and bureaucracy might still be a problem, but according to Transparency International, Uzbekistan moved up to the 140th position in 2021, up from 172nd position in 2010. Quite an achievement. The future looks promising, and with all the investments coming in, Tashkent might be one of the fastest growing cities in the world in the next five to 10 years. 
Many international chains are common here, like Hilton, Marriott, KFC, Wendy's, and many others. Lots of countries are investing, like Turkey and China and Korea. For retail investors, there are some restrictions, though. You can only buy a property if it's over $150,000. Which is smart, this way the affordable housing won't be affected, and no housing bubble will be formed. IT sector is growing fast, there's an IT park, and recently a lot of Russians relocated to Tashkent, further contributing to the local IT potential. What's the appeal? Living here is cheap, Tashkent feels very safe, I always love it when you can go out at night without any worries, that's the way it's supposed to be. The city is clean and well taken care of, the weather is nice. This is what late November looks like, although summers can be a little too hot. Russian is still widely spoken and most signs on buildings are still in Russian, but the younger generation more and more often is choosing to learn English instead of Russian, something I've always noticed in Georgia, Azerbaijan and other post-Soviet countries. Uh, we study at National University in Uzbekistan and uh, Foreign Philology Faculty in English. You know, I was so surprised that like you're is Uzbekistan and you don't speak uh, Russian instead of that you speak English our faculty is English so we just learn it's English and took out so that's why we can speak only in English and even at school you didn't uh... no we learn but a little bit we can understand but replying is kind of a bit difficult for us so that's why what are your plans after graduation after graduation I'm gonna study at Webster what, what kind of program do you want to pursue? I'm gonna learn TESOL or TEFL. Okay. Oh, okay. Very it. cool. Very cool. Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you later. <laughs> it's always nice when they have athletic equipment. You step outside, you get some exercise. You know, it's important to stay in shape. You guys thought I lost shape and I can't do a pull-up? Well... There you go. So when you get tired of the city, what are your options? You can go to the mountains. If you love skiing in the winter or hiking in the summer, good, because there are Chimgen Mountains not far from Tashkent. We're gonna take that cable car that's gonna take us to the very top of the mountain and there's gonna be some breathtaking views and I'm gonna show that to you in a second. There's a number of skiing resorts like Amersoy Mountain Resort that was completed in just 2017. And finally, we are at the summit of Amersoy, 2,290 meters above sea level. Another place that we visited was Chinner Kent. It's located in a picturesque mountainous area at the foot of the Chatkel range of the Tian Shan Mountains. Location and the panoramic scenery are perfect. There's a hiking area and some restaurants. There's a number of cable cars in this area. The first one we visited was Amersoy, and this one is called Chinner Kent. Okay, we are in Chinarkand. Well, here I am on top of Chinarkand. What a beautiful place, right? Fantastic. I mean, living next to the mountains is definitely a privilege. It's just wonderful. You know, we got a day off. Go to the mountains, get some fresh air, get some views, and you'll get plenty of energy. Wonderful. Uzbekistan is doing a great job promoting tourism and building tourist infrastructure. But I've got one major complaint, and that is garbage. Sometimes it seems like people just don't care. They throw away garbage like it's nothing. Just look around. It's a beautiful scenic spot where people stop to take photos. And then you see garbage all over the place. Just look down below. And it seems like a lot of people just don't care. We were following a car with two guys in it and they threw out Coke bottles one after another. Then I was having a conversation with a lady from Tashkent and she was standing right here and then randomly she threw away a bottle. I was like, what the hell is going on? I'm a foreigner here, I would never do that. <laughs> So there you have it. Tashkent might be one of the fastest growing cities in the world in the next five to ten years. It's got all the ingredients for it, so come see for yourself. Thanks for watching guys. If you love this video, give it a thumbs up and share it. And hit that bell button so you'll be notified about my future videos. 
Thank you. Next video will be Kazakhstan.